Hello everyone, hope you are doing good. So this video is a continuation of my previous video on developmental psychology. In that video I talked about stages of lifespan, physical, cognitive and psychosocial development. So from this video I'm going to talk about theories of development. So let's get started. So from this video we'll talk about psychosexual cognitive, psychosocial, and moral theories of development. First, we'll look at psychosexual development by Sigmund Freud. So this theory I have spoken earlier. You can watch my personality video. I have spoken about these stages in detail. So here, we'll look at these stages briefly. First, we have oral stage. We have five stages. So the first one is oral stage. This is birth to 12 to 18 months. So baby's chief source of pleasure involved mouth-oriented activities such as sucking and feeding. Second stage is anal stage. 12 to 18 months to 3 years. So child derives sensual gratification from withholding and expelling feces. So zone of gratification is the anal region and toilet training is an important activity. Third stage is phallic stage, 3 to 6 years. Child become attached to parent of other sex, later identifies with same sex parent as superego develops. So, zone of gratification shifts to genital region. Fourth stage, latency stage, six years to puberty. This is a time of relative calm between more turbulent stages. Fifth stage is genital stage, puberty through adulthood. Remergences of sexual impulses of phallic stage channeled into mature adult sexuality. Then we are going to talk about cognitive development theory by Jean Piaget. We have four stages here. First we have sensory motor stage, birth to two years. Major achievement is object permanence. I spoke about this object permanence in my previous video also. So object permanence means, for example, we'll say a child is playing with the ball and when the child moves, if we take away the ball, the child still remembers that he was playing with the ball and he'll look for the ball. So that's what we call object permanence. And also this is a stage where we can see trial and error. Second stage is pre-operational stage, two to seven years. Major aspect of this stage is symbolic play. So as you can see in the picture, there's little tea parties. So child has taken teddy bears to symbolize people and little toy teacups and plates. So this is what we call symbolic play. At this stage, the child can use language, but the child can't take perspective of other person. Also, the child can't grasp principles of conversation. Then we have the third stage, concrete operational stage, seven to 11 years. At this stage, child develops principles of conservation, also logical reasoning, and also child is able to think about two or more dimensions of a problem. Fourth stage, formal operational stage, 11 to 15 years. At this stage, the child is more abstract and idealistic. Moving on, 
Psychosocial Development by Eric Erickson. There are eight stages. First one is trust versus mistrust. Birth to 12 to 18 months. So this stage centers around infants' basic needs being met by the parent. For example, when the child is crying and when the mama knows this is the time to feed the child. So when feeding the child, the child builds trust towards the par parent. But when a child cries, if the parent didn't approach the child, the child builds mistrust towards the parent. So failure to develop trust will result in fear. Also, learning who to trust allows the infant to develop a sense of security. Second stage is autonomy versus shame and doubt. 12 to 18 months to 3 years. So at this stage, the child begins to explore his surroundings and to do for himself. Key challenge relates to exerting independence. Also, the child starts to doubt their ability to carry out a task that is new and will often need encouragement to tackle it successfully. And the third stage, initiative versus guilt, age 3 to 6. So at this stage, the child tries to master the world around them learning basic skills and principles of skills. So the development task at this stage is to achieve a sense of competence and initiative. When the child is allowed to select personally meaningful activities, it will develop a positive view of oneself. If the child is not allowed to make his own decisions, they tend to develop a sense of guilt over time. Fourth stage, industry versus inferiority. The developmental task at this stage is to achieve a sense of industry and to set and attain personal goals. If failed, to, if failed in this attempt, the child feels a sense of inadequacy. Fifth stage, identity versus role confusion, age 12 to 18. So at this time, the child tests his limits, breaks dependent ties, and establishes a new identity. They separate oneself from one's parents. If failed in this attempt, one experiences role confusion. Sixth stage, intimacy versus isolation age 18 to 35. The developmental task is to form intimate relationships. So if they success, they'll have a committed and secure relationships. If they fail, they suffer emotional isolation, loneliness and depression. Seventh stage, generativity versus stagnation, age 35 to 60. In this stage, one goes beyond self and family and wants to help the next generation. The individual adjusts the discrepancies between one's dreams and one's actual accomplishments. Thus, he realizes a sense of productivity. The main quality of productivity is the ability to love well, to work and to play well. If one does not succeed in this regard, one stagnates and dies psychologically. Last stage, integrity versus despair, age 60 plus. This is the core crisis at this stage. If one has lived a productive and worthwhile life and has coped with the failures and success and has fewer regrets then he has achieved ego integrity. Otherwise, one feels despair, hopelessness, 
resentment and self-disgust. Last theory, moral development by Jean Piaget. We have two stages, heteronomous morality. We can see this heteronomous morality in younger children, especially between 6 to 10 years. So they see justice and rules are conceived of as unchangeable properties of the world, removed from the control of people. So they think rules are products of inflexible requirements. You can't change the rules. Whereas in autonomous morality, they become aware that rules and laws are created by people. So rules are viewed as products of mutual agreement. We can see this autonomous morality in older children, children between 10 years and older. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you need any help regarding notes and more facts, please do contact me via cascade.psychology.gmail.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Watch my next video on learning. Thank you.